Hello, this is Catherine from Accelerated Reader, reading books for you. Today, I will be reading Chapter 7 from The Bucket by DJ Catrell, illustrated by May Lee. Before I begin reading, I would like to give a big thanks to the author for sending me this book to read on my channel. In the description below, I've included links where you may find and purchase this book. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Chapter 7 Rachel struck a good walking pace. She knew from brownies that to run would be silly, as they would run out of breath quite quickly. But a good steady, fast walk would help them cover more ground more quickly. After ten minutes of walking together in thoughtful silence, Robin noticed that the grass seemed to be longer. In fact, it was nearly waist high. He stopped and said, Are you sure we are going the right way, Rach? This grass is getting well difficult to walk through. Maybe we should go a different way? Rachel lifted her eyes to the sky and then looked Robin directly in the eye. Why? Why could you not have been a girl? A girl wouldn't be whinging like you do. A girl would be helping me and asking how I feel about things. A girl would be excited to be trying to find her lost father. A girl would want to just get on with it. Robin was astonished at Rachel's outpouring. What did I do? He said defensively. Rachel sighed heavily and sat down in the grass. Nothing, Robin. You did nothing, just like you always do. Robin was utterly confused. I was just saying, that's all. There might be an easier way somewhere. Rachel stood up, even angrier than before. Well, there isn't, is there? We've just got to keep going until we find someone or something, or... The conversation was cut short by the sound of a low growling. Rachel stood. Robin said, Did you hear that? Rachel shushed him and looked around. Something not far away was moving through the grass close to them. It seemed to be stalking them. They both looked around and Rachel whispered to Robin, keep very still and be really quiet. It might just pass us by. Robin didn't have to be told, but still couldn't help saying, you said that before, and look what happened. The low growling sounded like it was coming from something very dangerous and close by. They both slowly began to crouch down, hoping not to be noticed by whatever was out there. Robin whispered over to Rachel, Hey, Rach, stand up slowly and take a look. See if you can see anything. Rachel looked at Robin for a moment in disbelief. Okay, Hercules, she said in a loud whisper. I'll just put my life in danger for you, shall I? You're the older one. You take a look. Robin had had enough of Rachel's taunts. Okay then, I will. You think you're really clever, don't you? And so much better than anyone else. He began to raise his voice. Oh, I'm Rachel Jameson, and I don't need any help from anyone because I'm so clever. I know everything, and... He was cut off mid-sentence by the huge black cat-like creature that leapt out of the grass and pinned him to the ground. Rachel jumped back at the sight of this huge, evil-looking beast, three times the size 
of a leopard, but black scales instead of fur, and immensely powerful looking. It was long and sleek, and its eyes bored into Robin's as he lay helpless under the weight of the armored paw, pressing down on his chest. Robin looked back at the beast that was breathing heavily as its hot breath took his own away. It curled its lips, exposing a fearsome set of teeth. Robin looked over to Rachel, who was stood petrified to the spot. Robin just managed to pant out, help! The beast turned its head slowly and looked at Rachel. Rachel looked at the terrifying beast. Nothing moved for a brief moment. She couldn't think of how to help Robin. Nothing had prepared her for this. This creature looked like pure evil, and Rachel panicked. A slight breeze rustled through the grass. Rachel turned on her heel and ran. Then Robin heard a voice in his head. Aha, it said, looking back down at the helpless boy under his paw. You're it. And with that, the beast leapt off of him and chased after Rachel. It only took a couple of seconds for the beast to catch up to her, but it stayed behind her. Robin stood up, trying to catch his breath, and then ran after the beast and Rachel. Rachel ran as fast as she could, desperately thinking of how to escape this evil creature, and then she heard the beast in her mind. Run to the creek quickly, he's it. Rachel's mind was spinning. What creek? Who's what? She shouted out loud. The beast was gaining on her. He won't catch up with us if we jump over the electric daisy patch. Rachel was really confused now, but kept running out of fear and instinct. They had been attacked by the scariest looking thing she had ever seen that was now trying to save her from Robin, who was absolutely useless and of no threat at all. What electric daisy patch, she shouted. The beast was nearly upon her. She heard its voice in her head again, just as she ran out of the long grass into an open plain. The beast leapt and hit her on the side of the body, knocking her sideways. That patch, she heard it say. And as she fell to the ground, she saw the creature leap over a patch of yellow and black headed daisy type plants. As she came to a stop, she noticed a blue light that seemed to crackle between the heads of the flowers. Rachel heard Robin shouting her name as he burst out of the long grass and ran straight into the daisy patch. As his feet hit them, he felt a strong jolt of electricity surge through his body, which blew him into the air. The patch was not very big, and as he landed back in it, he made some very odd noises whilst tumbling through it out to the other side, then fell to the ground, twitching and barely conscious. Rachel watched as the beast turned and leapt towards Robin, landing right next to him. It put its snout down close to Robin's face, sniffed, and looked at Rachel. In her mind, she heard its voice again. He didn't leap over the daisies. What a twit. He's been zapped. Never mind. He'll be okay in a moment. How do you fancy a game of jump next? He's obviously a bit rubbish at playing it. The beast looked at Robin again. What kind of idiot runs into a patch of electric daisies? Rachel walked cautiously over to Robin, 
and the beast. She was beginning to make some sort of sense of what had just happened and spoke to the beast out loud. You're not trying to kill us, are you? She asked. Why would I want to kill you? It said, somewhat surprised by the question. Robin was beginning to come round and as he opened his eyes, the first thing he saw was the fearsome creature leaning over him. Don't eat me, he screamed. The beast leaped backwards and crouched down ready for an attack. What? It shouted in both their minds. Who's going to eat you? Robin was scrabbling backwards to get away from the creature. Rachel shouted at him, Robin, stop! But it was too late. Robin backed off straight into the daisy patch and felt the jolt of electricity surge through him again. The force of the jolt flung him forwards to the feet of the beast. He lay on the ground twitching as he had the first time. The beast looked at Rachel and cocked its head. What did he do that for? Does he like getting zapped? Rachel could hear that the beast was genuinely confused by Robin. A grin started spreading across Rachel's face as she asked, You're not trying to hurt us, are you? The beast was flamoxed. Hurt you? No, I'm the jazz band. I just wanted to play it with you. Why would I want to hurt you? Rachel laughed out loud in utter relief. Sorry, but you look really scary to us. I've never seen anything like you before. The jazz band looked at Rachel with its head cocked to one side. Scary? Me? Oh, you should meet my brother. He's really scary. And as Robin started coming round again, another jazz band leapt out of the grass, landing next to the first. Wow, two-legged things, it said in their minds. It looked just as fearsome as the first and slightly bigger. Do you want to play jump? Do they want to play jump? It asked the first, who said to Rachel, this is my brother. Then it looked at Robin, who opened his eyes and froze in terror. What's wrong with that one? Asked the second Jasper. The first beast laughed. Electric Daisy Buzz twice, and they think we look scary. The second beast leant down to Robin, who was now utterly petrified. Are you nuts? Those things can kill. Robin didn't know what to say. He looked at Rachel wide-eyed. It's okay, she said. They don't mean us any harm. They just look a bit scary, I think. Robin remained unconvinced and stared at the creatures towering above him, then looked over to Rachel. Yeah? Then why did that one over there attack me? His voice sounded squeaky and his teeth felt weird. The first jasmine looked at his brother and said defensively, I didn't do anything. I just tagged him. It's not my fault he's an idiot who doesn't know how to play tag. Come on, kid, get up. He said a little apologetically. There's games to play while it's still light. Rachel stepped forward and asked, Do you know of others like us? The first leaped over to her side and sat down. Yeah, loads. We can play jump now. You do know how to play jump, don't you? You must know how to play jump, surely. Rachel looked at Robin, who was unsteadily getting to his feet and shaking his head. Sorry, no, she said. We are new here. We're looking for someone and we're in a bit of a hurry, I think. Robin, are you okay? 
Robin started walking over to Rachel, but his legs felt like jelly and he began to sink down. The second jazz band licked out a steely claw and caught Robin by the jacket. Steady boy, you've had a shock. Both jazz band looked at each other and then laughed out loud, which sounded a bit like a crow being slowly drowned whilst warbling. Robin regained his balance. What are those things? He said, looking back at the patch of flowers. The jasmine slowly retracted his claw as Robin regained his balance. Those are electric daisies, very strong when they're flowering. You should be more careful. He turned to Rachel. The humans live over that way somewhere, over the other side of the creek, he gestured with his head. The first jazz band jumped straight up in the air and down onto his front paws again. Then they've got to play jump. If they're in a hurry, they've got to jump the creek. They can't go round. That would take days. Robin steadied himself and walked slowly to stand beside Rachel, then whispered, What's going on, Rach? What are they talking about? Rachel sat down. Robin followed suit. I think they're going to help us. Remember, Brian said, find the jazz band. I think these are the jazz band he was talking about. She turned to the jazz band. My name is Rachel and this is Robin. May I ask what your names are? The first jazz band jumped around in a circle and Robin and Rachel both moved quickly backwards for fear of being trodden on. Yeah, of course, I'm the jazz band and he's the jazz band. Now we had better go the creek. The Babadon will be rising to feed. The second jazz band jumped over to them. Climb on then. Robin looked at the beasts in front of him. He looked at Rachel and then back at the beasts. Why? he asked. The first jazz band looked at the second and said, You take the idiot. I'll take the girl. The second looked Robin up and down. Why do I get the idiot? The first moved closer to Rachel. Because you're better with the simple-minded ones. You know you are. Rachel was beginning to really like these two creatures and started to climb onto the back of the first. Will you help us over the creek? She asked, not entirely sure where or what the creek was. The second jasmine sighed. Yeah, of course. It's what we do for fun. Oh, all right then. I'll take the idiot. Come on, idiot. Climb up. Robin was outraged. I am not an idiot, and I'm not climbing onto anything. The first jazz man felt Rachel make herself comfortable on his back. Blimey, you're very light. Hold on round my neck, but don't touch the ears, okay? What Rachel had thought were black scales actually felt soft and furry. Hard, yes, but soft and furry, nonetheless. Okay, she said and looked down at Robin. Come on, Robin, they're only joking. They seem really friendly. Robin stood his ground. No, will not, he said, churlishly. They keep calling me an idiot. The second bent down to Robin and looked him in the eye. You want to cross the creek, don't you? Or should we leave you here in the open as meat for the dragons? They like the taste of two-legged ones, I hear, he said in a fairly intimidating voice. Robin swallowed hard in the face of this huge impossible creature. Yes, I mean, no, he said, suddenly unsure of his own previous bravado. 
Then climb on and hold on tight," it growled low and deep. Robin nearly flew onto its back in a single leap. Okay then, he said with his heart in his mouth. There, said the first, told you that you were good with the idiots. The second laughed and so did Rachel. Robin scowled but made himself as comfortable as he could. The jazz band turned its head to Robin and smiled. Only kidding, kid. Right then, let's go play jump. The jazz band both turned and crouched, then leapt forward and ran. Rachel and Robin clung on for their lives, tucking themselves down behind the heads of the beasts as they raced across the open plain at an incredible speed. They ran swift and fast for a good five minutes. Robin was still feeling weak from the shock of the daisies, but managed to cling on simply by sheer will and the desire not to die if he fell off at that speed. Eventually, they slowed and came to a stop at the edge of the creek. Rachel looked at what the jazz band had called a creek. This was not what she had expected. This was a vast gap in the land, more of a canyon than a creek, more of a chasm than a creek. It stretched for miles in either direction. The jazz band loped over to the edge. Rachel and Robin looked down and then across. The other side of the creek was at least a couple of hundred meters away and they couldn't see the bottom of it because of the carpet of insects that were swarming down the chasm from both directions as far as they could see. The insects seemed to be slowly rising up and were nearly level with them. The buzzing was becoming painfully loud. Robin looked over them to the other side of the chasm and a horrible thought occurred to him. He shouted above the noise to the jazz band he was on. You are not seriously going to jump from here to the other side, are you? It ain't possible, surely. The jazz band replied, Yeah, of course. We've got wings, haven't we? Robin was astonished. Wings? Really? He said, looking down on either side of the jazz band. They in turn laughed in his head. Don't be a dumb nut. Of course not. Watch the bugs. Something big began to emerge through the floating carpet of insects. Robin watched in fascination as the head of a creature, easily the size of a bus, slowly appeared and opened its vast mouth. Neither he nor Rachel had ever seen anything like this before. Its head was flat on top. It had one small eye in the side of it and one very small ear. Its skin was a mottled green and blue that sparkled in the sunlight. The enormous head moved forward and sucked insects into its mammoth mouth and then began to sink again. Rachel's jasmine shouted in her mind, here we go, hold on tight. It circled round and ran forward in a wide circle to pick up speed, then leapt from the side of the chasm directly onto the flat surface of the beast's head. Rachel screamed as her stomach felt like it had turned upside down when the jasmine had lurched forward to jump. The beast had lowered below the buzzing insects. Robin sat on his jazz band, staring out in horror as Rachel disappeared from view beneath the cloud of insects. He shouted down to his jazz band, ain't there a bridge or something? Surely there's a bridge here somewhere. Another, Bobadon's head began to rise and repeated the same insect eating routine as the first. Robin's jasmine shouted in his mind, 
Grip on hard, kid. And then it leapt into the air. Robin gripped on and stopped breathing. They arced through the air, landing on the Babadon's head. The jasmine gripped down hard with its claws. It shouted, Look down, kid, and keep your mouth closed. The head of the Babadon started to descend through the cloud of insects. Robin closed his eyes as well his mouth. Rachel was the first to see the canyon they were in as the Babadon sank down. Even though the insects were blocking out most of the sunlight, she could still see the amazing scene below her. Sunlight broke through the swarm above her in places that provided just enough light to see it all. The canyon stretched in either direction for miles, and it seemed like a world beneath the world. Underneath the sky of buzzing insects, the canyon appeared wider than above. The rocks on either side sparkled with reflected light in a rainbow of colors. And as she looked down, she could see that the Babadon she and the Jasmine were on was immense. Its neck was a good 20 meters long, and its body seemed unfathomably large and tubular. Half of it was hidden below the water. The gigantic animal was standing in a river that shone yellow and green, running along the canyon's length. Small sulfur birds flew around her in flocks, and she could see other impossible-looking creatures resting along the shores of the river. As she looked around, she could see that there were seven or eight Babadon raising their heads to suck in the insects above. Waterfalls fell, sparkling from the sides of the rocky walls. Rachel just tingled with excitement and laughed out loud, exclaiming, Wow! This is just beautiful! The jasmine turned itself around. First time here then, two legs? It said, looking up to see the Babadon that Robin was on sinking below the clouds of insects. Robin felt his stomach turn over and feared that it might drop out of his bottom. Thankfully, due to his football training, he had a good clench, and it didn't. He had opened his eyes briefly and looked down. When he did, he had simply looked at the distance between him and the river below, thinking, If I fall off, I'm going to die. Then closed his eyes again and screamed. He was still screaming as his Babadon's head came level with Rachel's, who shouted over to him, Oh, Robin, isn't it just wonderful? Her heart pounded in her chest with excitement and joy. Robin heard her, stopped screaming, and shouted out, You're insane! We're going to die! He closed his eyes and gripped onto his jasper. Then Rachel briefly thought of her friends back home and wondered if any of them or any other child of her age would ever see such an incredible sight. She felt just privileged and lucky beyond words. Robin opened his eyes, looked down, and felt nauseous. I think I'm going to be sick, he said, clinging onto his jasmine for grim death. Rachel's jasmine looked over at the other Babadons rising to feed from the insects and shouted out in all of their minds, Okay, kids, hang on tight. Time to play jump. Rachel gripped hard as she felt the muscles of the jazz band tighten beneath her, and then it jumped. Its body stretched out as it sailed through the air and gracefully landed on a rising Babadon's head. The Babadon seemed not to notice and continued rising into the cloud of insects. It took a huge gulp from the air and then slowly began to descend again. Robin's jazz band laughed and shouted out, Here we go, and if you are sick on me, I'll throw you off. Hope that helps. 
Now hold on, kid. Here we go. The second jasmine followed the path of the first and landed on a rising babadon. When he landed, Robin slid off and threw up on the babadon's head. The second jasmine laughed. Well done, kid. You're learning. Now climb back on. We don't have much time. As Robin tried to recover himself and climb back onto the jasmine, the rising babadon reached the cloud of insects and Robin accidentally opened his mouth, nearly swallowing a whole mouthful of insects. He spat furiously and then shouted out, Please stop! Just for a minute! Please stop! His jasmine stopped moving as the head of a babadon descended. Take a moment, kid. Take a breath. Robin did so and pressed his head into the jasmine's solid fur. He panted for a few moments before his jasmine shouted out, Here we go, kid. Only one more to go. Climb on quick. Robin did so and then the jasmine leapt into the air. Rachel was beside herself with joy as her jasmine leapt from Babadon's head to Babadon's head. And as they rose and fell, then felt the jasmine hit solid ground again. And Sunlight warmed her face as they jumped for the last time. She was back in the meadow, but on the other side of the creek. Her jasmine circled and jumped around, roaring with pleasure as she clung on laughing. Stop now, jasmine, please, she cried out at last. Where's Robin? The Esmeralda stood at the bottom of the canyon. She had been picking poisonous herbs on one of the shores with her dwarf slave, Dargal, when she felt the jazz band arrive. As she looked up, her black eyes had seen the beasts jumping from Babadon to Babadon. So now it begins. The sister arrives, she said to herself. She put her hand into the air and clicked her fingers. A loud crack filled the air. As she did this, the babadon that Robin's jazz band was leaping to turned its head out of the jazz band's flight path and tilted to the side. The jazz band and Robin began to fall, having missed their target. Robin gripped on, not knowing what was happening, and yet a feeling of blackness filled his heart that he could not explain. It was a feeling of sadness and rage that filled him top to toe, coming up from the ground. His jasmine was clever and quick in his reflexes. Instead of plummeting down to the canyon floor, he twisted in midair and hit the neck of the babadon, sinking his claws in. The babadon screamed out in pain and began to sink. New target, kid! The jasmine shouted out and leapt from the neck of the babadon to the side of the cliff face. As it hit the cliff, it scrambled to take hold, falling down the cliff side, but then managed to grip onto a cluster of falling vines. Robin felt gravity pull at him, and he needed all of the strength in his arms and legs to hold onto the jasmine. The Esmeralda smiled as it watched the jasmine slowly crawl up the vine to the top of the cliff. She looked down at Dargle. About one year to go now. Dargle, and then we can begin. Then the fools will find the room. Dargle bowed to his mistress. I am yours to command, mistress. Both Rachel and her jasmine were becoming just a little worried as they waited in the meadow, when eventually they saw the paws of Robin's jasmine grip the earth of the edge of the cliff face. And as they emerged from the chasm, Rachel's jasmine leapt over to his brother. She's here, isn't she? He said. I heard the crack. The second jasmine crawled over the edge and fell to the ground as Robin slid off him. Yeah, 
The witch is here. We'll have to wait here until she's gone to get back, he said, panting. The first looked at Rachel. You kids had better go. The Esmeralda hates two legs. It might not be safe for you here. Rachel became concerned. What's the Esmeralda? What about you too? She said gravely. Robin's jazz band was regaining his breath somewhat. She's a bad creature. She lives to cause pain, but she has her limits. We just have to wait until she is gone, but you two should leave. Robin put his hand on his jasmine's shoulder, and even though he was still feeling queasy, he managed to say, Thank you for your help, jasmine. I think I'm going to be sick again. Then he fell to his knees and threw up. Rachel went to his side as Robin finished his vomiting and knelt up. We had better go. Are you okay, Robin? She said. Having thrown up all he could, Robin looked up at her and laughed. Oh yeah, just cock a hoop. She turned back to her jazz band and walked over to him. Thank you so much. That was the most wonderful game of jump I have ever played, she said, and then hugged his neck. The jazz band crouched down and purred. Best you get gone if you're in a hurry. We'll be fine. Rachel walked back to Robin and helped him up. She turned back to the two scary looking beasts and said, Thank you, Jasmine. I really hope we meet again. Her Jasmine laughed. Me too, kid. You know how to enjoy a good ride. That's for sure. Then Robin and Rachel began to continue their journey across the meadow. As they went, Robin looked back at the two resting Jasmine. Well, that was weird and bloody painful. As they walked, he began to feel a little steadier on his feet. Hey, Rach, he said, that apple in your pocket. I'm sort of hungry now. Rachel ignored him. Oh, come on, Rach. Just, I nearly died back there. Just a nibble, eh? Rachel just looked ahead. No. Robin persisted. But my stomach needs filling. Rachel carried on walking resolutely. Not listening, she said. Robin pleaded, please. Rachel was secretly enjoying herself. No, she said, smiling to herself. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for chapter eight. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In the description below, I've included links where you may find and purchase this book.